You have just recorded and edited a video that is going to rock the world. And all you have to do is figure out Adobe Premiere's export settings so you can upload it to YouTube. Well, that's no problem because I have got you covered. Okay, we are in Adobe Premiere and I have some random footage from video blocks that I've dropped in here. Let's export. Now the recommended video codec for YouTube exports is H.264. So you'll see a million things here and you don't really understand what they are and that is 100% fine. You do not need to worry about it, just leave it on H.264. In terms of the presets, you really don't have to worry too much about these. You can use these YouTube predefined ones, but if you don't know exactly what's going on with them, it's better to set it up manually and then save your own preset so you know exactly what you're doing. For now, just leave it on match source high bitrate. You'll want to make sure that export video and export audio are both checked so you can export those at the same time. And then you're going to go down here. The Premiere lets you add effects as you export, but you don't want to mess with that. You've already done all your effects and stuff in the actual timeline, so don't mess with those here. These video settings are where most of the action happens. Now, by default, the video resolution is going to match your sequence settings. So that's probably related to the resolution of the footage that you originally imported. However, if your computer can handle it and your bandwidth can handle it and your storage can handle it, I'd recommend that even if you filmed, for example, in 1080, I'd recommend that you export in 4K. Adobe Premiere will actually upsample it and do a pretty decent job of turning that into 4K footage. So if you're not working with a 4K timeline, that's fine but you can still create and upload 4K footage. And the prevailing theory is that YouTube gives you kind of a quality boost if you upload 4K footage, even if it's really just upsampled from 1080. So I would go ahead and leave this with 4K settings and use those for exports. I typically edit in 1080, but I'll usually export in 4K. The frame rate, again, is gonna depend on your sequence settings. So if you're recording in 23.9, you want this to be 23.9. If you're recording in 60 frames a second, you want this to be 60 frames a second. Which one you should use is a topic for another video, but whichever one you have used is the one you wanna export with. The field order, YouTube recommends leaving as progressive, aspect ratio, square. Render at maximum depth sounds like one of those things that's awesome, and so you would obviously check it, however, that usually doesn't apply. If you're, if you're just shooting with a regular DSLR, for example, or your phone, you're, you're, the maximum depth isn't gonna do much. So unless you're using a particularly powerful camera that has very high color depth, don't worry too much about that one. Save yourself the extra render time and just leave it unchecked. The other setting you're gonna wanna pay some attention to is the bit rate. This is something that a lot of people ignore and then they wonder why their video footage looks all janky and pixely on the other side. Bitrate is how much data is associated with the video per second. The more data, the clearer the picture. Now, that makes sense up to a limit. You don't just want to crank those numbers because the file sizes can get massive. So you want to find the right balance that gives you very high quality for the kind of footage that you have, but doesn't overdo it to the point where you're working with these giant bloated files for no particular reason. The main factors determining what bitrate you should choose are the resolution of the footage that you're using, the frame rate of the footage that you're using, and the amount of motion or complexity of the footage itself. So if you have a pretty static shot like this one where not a lot is happening, I can get by with a lower bit rate. However, if you're doing an action video of skiing or extreme sports or something like that, and there's a lot of motion, a lot going on, or you have a really complicated scene that's moving quite a bit, you probably wanna crank up the bit rate to allow more data to account for all those different pieces of what's happening in the footage. YouTube actually provides a quick reference guide, which you can see here, on what kinds of bit rate you might wanna use for different kinds of footage. So you can see for standard frame rate, so say 24 frames a second, which is what I'm using here, and 4K, the default would probably be about 35 to 45 megabits per second. If this were a fast moving video and there were a lot more going on, I would probably crank that up and do something more like this, even though this is generally intended for higher frame rates, just to get a little extra data to be able to account for that. However, this shot's pretty static, pretty straightforward. I'll leave this at 35 to 45 frames a second. Now I like to do VBR2 pass just to give it a little extra quality. So I'm going to do move this to about 35, move this to about 45, maybe we'll give it 50 on the high side. And that's probably good right there. That's gonna account for most uses. And you can always change it on a case-by-case -case basis if you need to. You'll also want to go and check your audio settings and just make sure these are set up right. Usually the default gets you pretty much where you need to be, 
but it's worth double checking. YouTube prefers the AAC format, so go ahead and make sure that that is set. For sample rate, they recommend 48,000 or 96,000. I'm seeing 48,000 as the max here, so we're just gonna leave it at that. If you have stereo, you can leave it on stereo. However, depending on how you've recorded your footage, for example, I had an action camera that would only put the audio on the left side and not the right side. So in that case, I would switch it to mono to balance it out. However, in most cases, stereo is the right answer and is just fine. In terms of audio quality, I can't think of any reason you would put this on anything but high. For audio bitrate, YouTube recommends 384. However, 320 is the max that Premiere seems to go up to, so we'll just leave it at that. The other weird setting that always throws people off is time interpolation. So this one, usually I recommend just leaving it on frame blending. Depending on what you've done in the video, this probably isn't gonna actually do anything. In most cases, when you're doing time remapping or speed ramping or any of that, you're setting the time interpolation settings then. So you don't need to do that here because it'll use whatever setting was set there. So you can go ahead and just leave that on frame blending. However, before you queue it up or hit export, go up here and hit the save button, and you can just add a name for this. And now you have your own custom setting that you can use in the future. And that's it. That's how you export from Adobe Premiere with YouTube's recommended settings to get the best possible quality out of YouTube so that that video that you just recorded and edited will literally knock the socks off the entire world. I'm James Archer. I talk about filmmaking and photography stuff. And if you are into those topics, go ahead and hit that subscribe button.